This lesson is about parent functions or the library of functions, and we will also work on relations. In previous math classes, you have studied these, but I want to review them with you as we go through calculus. We will need every single one of these functions and relations that we will be going over in our review. So the first function we're going to work on is y equals x squared. Everybody knows what it looks like, but let's see how we graph it so we get a pretty accurate graph. What we need is a domain and range table. So we make our domain range table, which is x, y. And we substitute values for x, and then we compute the values for y. And some of the values we will substitute for x are 0, 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. If we substitute in 0 for x, of course we get out 0. If we substitute a 1 in for x and square it, we get a 1. If we substitute a negative 1 in for x and square it, we will get a positive 1. If we substitute a 2 in for x, we will get 4. And if we substitute a negative 2 and square it, we will get another positive 4. So we will graph these points on our Cartesian coordinate system. And don't forget, it is set up with x is going in this horizontal direction and y is going into the vertical direction. So the first point we want to plot is 0, 0, which is here. Then the next one is 1, 1, which is 1 to the right, 1 up, plots there. The next point on our list is negative 1, 1. So this goes 1 to the left and 1 up. The next point is 2, 4, 2 to the right, 4 up. And the last point is negative 2, positive 4. So now that we have our five points graphed, we will connect them into the nice parabola for y is equal to x squared. And as you know, it does come out to be a nice u. And when we think about this graph, we also think about it as a graph that decreases and then increases. So not only are we plotting points, we're thinking about what the graph is doing. Our second function is y equals log base 2 of x. Now this was a little bit more difficult, and some of you might have struggled in previous classes in doing this. But remember, change this to 2 to the y is equal to x. And use y as your independent variable and x is your dependent variable. And again, make your domain range table. Only we're going to do it a little backwards. We're still going to put it x, y. But we're going to fill in for y first. So the first value we always try to put in is 0. And then we'll put in a 1, and then a negative 1, a 2, and a negative 2. OK. Let's do that substitution. Now remember, we are substituting in for y, not x. So we'll say 2 to the 0 is what? Well, 2 to the 0 is 1. Next, we'll substitute in the 1 and get 2 to the 1, which we know to be 2. If we put in negative 1, we get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. And if we substitute 2 in for y, we get 2 squared, which is 4. And if we substitute in the negative 2 for y, we get 1, 4. We are now going to plot these points. So we'll make our graph again and plot those points. 1, 0 lies here. 2, 1 is there. 1 half, negative 1. Well, it's one half to the right and one down, so it's here. 4, 2 goes 4 to the right and 2 up. And then 1 fourth, negative 2 means 1 fourth to the right and 2 down. You see, as we plot these points, they've come closer and closer to the y-axis. So we know there is some sort of an asymptote in here. So when we create our graph, we will not let it touch the y-axis but go up like that towards the right. 
And as you look at this graph, you see that it is always increasing. And that's very important, again, when you look at your graph to visualize what they do. The next function is y equals arc sine x, inverse trig function. I know most people don't like graphing this function, but it isn't that difficult to do. First, remember that the domain is negative 1 to 1, and the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now from that, we are again just going to make that domain range table and just, just do a few points. Since the domain starts at negative 1, we know that if x is equal to negative 1 here, then the sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. So our y is the negative pi over 2. And that's where we begin our range anyway. Then we have 0, and we know sine of 0 is 0, or the arc sine of 0 is 0. So that's a 0. If we put in a positive 1 for our x, we know that the y value will be pi over 2. Now to graph those three, we'll plot them first and then connect the dots. We have a negative 1, negative pi over 2. We have a 0, 0. And then we have a 1, pi over 2. To connect these dots, if you remember what this looks like, which is really important, and it's a little curve that starts at negative pi over 2 and ends at pi over 2 on the y's, and of course negative 1 and 1 on the x's. And again, this graph is always increasing, but it only increases between the negative 1 and 1 and negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that's what you have to remember when you are graphing your arc sine function. The next graph we have is not a function, it's a relation. And it is x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. If you recall what has happened in your previous classes, you might recognize this, that this is an ellipse. And we have a very special way of graphing our conic sections. What we look for on an ellipse is the major axis and the points that end the ellipse on the major axis, which is this axis here, because 9 is bigger than 4, so that makes the y the major axis. And we will be plotting points 0, plus, or minus 3. And then we have a minor axis, and that is our x-axis. And we will be plotting points plus or minus 2, 0. So let's try that make our coordinate system. On the y's, we're going to do plus 3 and minus 3 and plus 2 for the x and minus 2 for the x. And you can see our ellipse forming just by those points. And what we'll do, because we just want this to be a quick graph, is to connect those. And once we have connected it, we have our ellipse. This ends this lesson. Hope you can do the homework on it. So good luck with the homework.